Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert, the Love of Cowboy Muhammad, down here in the dirty, dirty in Alabama, working in the shop, pulling a late night. A man, y'all can see, man. I'm already rubbing all of my all of my hair off, you know. But um, working on a new project, and I thought that this would be a great time to do this little video. Uh, just to go in to illustrate or talk about a little bit more in detail about beveling and using your modeling spoon. I think I've done one video about this already. And a lot of times, even now, after doing this for um, a number of years, um, I still uh, am not proficient as I would like to be with my modeling spoon and my bevelers because I mean uh, even back when I was first taking the classes at Tandy and we was going through uh, learning how to leather carve and different things like that you know I really got comfortable with the leather carving aspect because once you cut into the leather the leather is very easy to then apply your bevelers um, and I have several different kinds here. You guys can see. Well, this is actually a, a background or two, but uh, several different bevelers, several several different uh, depths or pitches on the tools. Now, all of these are craftsman tools uh, that I bought from Tandy, with the exception of this one here. This is one I found at a yard sale. Um, and I actually, they had it in the toolbox with mechanic tools. They didn't even know what it was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes you can get lucky. You know, I think I gave the lady 10 cents for this one. But anyway, um, getting a little bit more proficient with my bevelers and my, my, my modeling spoon. Uh, one thing that I can tell you about is if you are a newer crafter, you're just beginning in this thing and, and you want to get, um, you want to get off into leather carving. Um, this little jewel here, the modeling spoon, uh, they and I have two of these, two different kinds. I have um, actually one with a ball stylus, or actually it's not even a ball stylus. Uh, it's just the regular pin point. Here, here it is. Um, this one here just has a regular point on it for doing fine lines, and you can do a lot with this tool on detailing. Um, where you don't want to cut or you don't want to bevel, but you want to show a line into your artwork. And then it still has a spoon on the opposite end. Uh, it's, it's a little bit bigger than this one. That you can tell the spoon. It's a little bit bigger than this one, but it's a lot smaller than this one. So I have a little bit more control uh, in some areas of my artwork. And that's one thing that's that's very key. Now, one thing about using a beveled piece, or if you're going to do bevel work and just modeling spoon work, which I, I am starting to become a huge fan of it because you can do so much distinction into your, your artwork, and you can really get in there and manipulate the, the artwork itself to... So it's kind of, of a deceptive look to the eye or the person who's looking at it. So, but first things first, the key that I think the key to making any leather work go from flea market quality to, oh, wow, that's beautiful, is in your transference of your graphics I th and then especially if you're not going to be doing any cuts uh, and you're going to just be doing spoon work and, and beveling work the the key thing is the transference of your graphics and let me show you what I meant this is a, a picture of that I'm working on here a project that I'm working on here that's going on one of my new wallet my, my new cowboy uh, wallet series that will come out next year uh, if you guys didn't know, I only do uh, 30 of those wallets a year, and they are one-of-a-kind pieces with the, with uh, artwork 
and I don't do it in duplicates. So, so um, once this artwork, once these 30 are gone, then that's it for the Cowboy series. So it's kind of like a little collector's thing too. Um, and, and if you're in business, you can come up with all of those types of little um, uh, extras in, 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 in your business to where you can really start to drive people to start pur purchasing your pieces because they already know it's only 30 that's in the world. And then the 2019 will go to a different um, uh, graphics or picture for the Cowboy Wallet series. But here is when we start to transfer. Now, what I recommend to really, and this is all, again, into making your beveling and spoon work stand out. This is all about making your beveling and spoon work really stand out. And the key to having a great transference of your graphics is a mechanical pencil. Now, yes, I do use regular pencils. I do use regular number two pencils. If I'm drawing my own artwork, um, and that's on uh, paper. So I do use these on regular pencil. And then sometimes I alternate between regular pencils and my mechanical pencil because if I really want to show, uh, like in this picture here, you guys can see the fine lines. My swivel knife would be, will cut these lines too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my modeling spoon with the point stylus to scratch these lines into the leather. But to make sure that these lines are picked up very well, and, and again, even with a number two pencil, you see how broad that point is? It's even bigger than my stylus point. Let's get this where you guys can see it. It's bigger than my stylus point. You see that? Okay, so to get those lines, and even in his hat right here, you see those lines in the hat? That was done with the mechanical pencil because the mechanical pencil, the, the lead is a lot finer and a lot small, smaller than a regular number two pencil. So that's the first thing is the transference of your artwork. Make sure that you use a mechanical pencil to bring out those fine lines. And here's uh, also a trick, not a trick, but a tip that you guys should know. Once you have your artwork transferred, let me make sure I got my lighting right. Uh, man, and, and this is, I, I went and bought one of those uh, clip-on um arm lights um man harbor freight you guys got to go so i buying harbor freight they they was you can find a lot of supplies that leather crafters need at harbor freight but anyway let me stay focused um even once after you transfer your artwork and this is what i found now a lot of crafters may not do this but i do you guys stay tight i'll be right back hold on because I had to go out and buy some more. Um, I know you guys probably are seeing the U-Haul boxes in the back. You know, uh, the house is getting remodeled right now. So um, uh, I brought a lot of my stuff out here to the shop. Okay, but the one key thing that I want to show you guys, especially when you're doing transference of your graphics, to preserve this, to preserve this. Now in my earlier years, I used to just transfer to my tracing film and then I'll take my stylus and then I'll just start going back over this, which is another key thing why you want a, a pointed stylus. So it's when you transfer this image to the leather, uh, you can use your point stylus to just go over this, go over the whatever you want to use. But to preserve that, to you want to get you some cellophane tape, packaging tape. 
cellophane packaging tape. And I keep this stuff. So, I mean, I had to buy me a new roll today. So, you guys know, um, I just don't, uh, I practice what I preach. So, I'm not just telling you to do something and then I'm not doing it myself. Um, and then there's another way also to where, because um, like I said, I do 30 of these wallets a year. And in doing 30 a year, it keeps me from having to draw the artwork over and over and over again every time. So, and the way we do this is once you lay your artwork out, I'm going to try to angle this where you guys can see. And, and I'm not just saying this because I think you guys don't know how to do it. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to take my packaging tape and I'm going to go right over the top of my uh, my artwork on my cellophane. And I'm just going to cut this. And I'm going to leave that down there where it'll stick and lay flat. And then I'm going to come right back again. Now, the thing with doing this, you want to make sure that you don't pull your tape so tight that you put creases uh, in your tape. You don't want to do that. because, Or you have any bubbles in your tape. Because once you start going over your artwork with your modeling spoon, it'll start popping those bubbles or it'll make your artwork on your leather look a little off. So what we're going to do is you want to just make sure that I usually just stick one end out and I'll pull it to where it's long enough. And then I'll just let the packaging tape rest on the artwork by itself. That way it's no wrinkles, no air bubbles, and I know that when I get ready to transfer this, and I always just put me a little tab on there so it don't, it's hard to find sometimes. And then once I do that, I take my knife and I'm just gonna cut out a trace all the way around my, uh, my transfer film. Not making the film any shorter, but I just want to get that extra excess tape off because we don't need this part. We just want to preserve our graphics. Now, some crafters might tell you something different, but what I found is one, I don't want to have to keep tracing this same pattern or transferring the same graphic over and over again for 30 times because that's going to take time away for me to actually do the work. So I just want to focus on doing the work. And the way to do that is to transfer my pattern. And then even after such, I can always come back and do it again. And I have a little line right there that I shouldn't. Uh, and the great part about it is even if you do have a mess up, you can go back and just pull those tapes, uh, tape strips off and retape it again. So, again, working with the modeling spoon and the beveler, making sure that the work is detailed and fine and you're preserving it, all of this is into making that bevel work really stand out. And now, actually, once it gets to the leather itself, now you can start doing your bevel work. Now, the great thing about bevel work is your leather has to be a little bit more more wet than just if you're going to be doing stamp work or you're going to what we call casing. I I found um, and you guys know that already that I'm a fan of the spray bottle because I can control how much water is actually going onto my level and the um, but I found that you want to make it just a little bit more wet than case it a little bit more than than normal. Oh, and here's another thing about you guys, and especially doing bevel work. Now, this is something else that I do. I tape the the grain, the, the flesh side uh, of my piece that I'm working on. And I also cut my piece, 
I don't just cut out the pattern itself. I cut out a little bit la larger. This, especially when you're beveling, and it also helps when you're stamping as well. Because leather has a tendency to stretch and, and whop and give a little bit. So, to make sure that my actual project stays intact and it doesn't alter or change shape, I always cut it out a little bit bigger. And I reinforce that with regular good old duct tape. It, it keeps those grains, uh, it keeps the, the, the fibers on the back of the, the piece all intact. So as I'm doing bevel work, because beveling is actually, and you guys can see from the tools itself, when you're beveling, you're, ra you're, go you're raising and separating the grain side. And this is what gives that, that, that feel right there. You can see where I've been be where I've been beveling around the outside portion of it. So it's actually pushing the leather down this this way like this. So in order to keep it from spreading, I just wanted to push down the the leather. It caused that separation. I don't want it to push down and spread. And that's what the purpose of the duct tape is. That's the purpose of the duct tape. Now, once I get this completed and finish tooling and doing all of my, my, my bevel and the spoon work, then I can just go on the back of here and just pull all of that off. And then whether if I decide that I want to uh, put a lining in it or if I want to make it look a little bit more natural or whatever the case may be that I feel for this particular uh, uh, item or collector's item with the Cowboy series, that's what I'll do, you know, and it doesn't, the duct tape doesn't affect or alter anything. It doesn't change. It just keeps everything tight and in there. It's, uh, it's, it's just the insurance just to make sure that the leather doesn't start to separate. Now, uh, here's the one thing also, it really, really helps if you're using a less, lesser grade leather everybody out there in the leather world can't afford herman oak everybody in the leather world can't afford european oak everybody out there in the leather world that's doing this can't afford even craftsman premium sometimes you have to get those good old 9052s uh from tandy uh that's probably about a c grade and this will really help it. And especially when you're doing tooling work and background in the work, you can mask a lot of those tick bites and range marks. But the problem with a lesser grade leather, they really just went in there and just start ripping the, the hide off of the flesh. So in some places it's very weak. Uh, and I think I've done another video about that, about how to choose a good piece of Budget leather, what I call budget leather. I mean, sometimes when you're out there balling on the budget, maybe you got to do out there and know how to make it do what it do. So, but really, uh, even if you're using a lesser grade leather, uh, leather hide, put that duct tape on the back of there. Even if you're doing belts, one long strip across the whole entire length of that belt and make sure that the duct tape sticks to it so it'll hold those fibers in tight. All right. I hope this helped you guys. Um, remember to go out there. Um, if you're going to get off into spooning and bevel work, make sure you have a mechanical pencil in your, your arsenal. It is imperative for doing fine lines and work. Also, make sure you have a modeling spoon that has a point stylus. Not a ball stylus, a point stylus and i think i have one in here uh that might have a ball on it yes this is a ball stylus you guys can see the ball point stylus you don't want to do fine detailing the fine lines in your artwork with a ball stylus because this is just like the pencil the tip is too broad so if you want to use fine lines, point stylus. I've even all I've also seen some crafters even use their stitching owl. So if you guys don't have a stitching owl in your arsenal, get you a stitching owl too as well. 
Uh, and I actually, I need to find mine because I got to do some work. Oh, there it is right there. See the point and the tip on the stitching owl? You can use that to just scribe those fine detailed lines. And all you're doing is just scribing it. You don't want to dig into the leather because then you just made a cut. Beveling work and spoon work is just rounding your graphics, giving it that more 3D natural feel, especially like around the nose area if you're working with graphics that has nose or teeth, like the teeth that's in here. This is all going to be done with this small spoon, the small end. And I just want to round it because just like in the, the only thing you want to cut with teeth is just the separation here or where you see gaps that are a separation. But in between the teeth, modeling spoon because your teeth are not cut. You just want to show the round portion of it. But anyway, I hope this helped you guys out. Thank you guys for chilling me these little 21 minutes. It's a late night, but it snowed outside all day today. So I'm actually locked in the house uh, doing what I love to do. Um, and the second part is giving you guys the information that can help you uh, uh, increase your, your, your leather craftsmanship uh, as much as you can. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscription button down below uh, and it'll always send you out an email uh, every time that I do one of these videos or uh, you have any questions, you guys can drop a question in the comment box uh, down below. If I don't have the answer, I know somebody who does. And between him and I, I think we can get you put on the right track of, of being a part of this leather family. It's a dying trade family. So as many of you crafters out there that's sticking to sticking to it and being true to it, you know, stay with it. Stay with it as long as you can. It's a beautiful thing. And you guys also, and don't get it twisted, you can make a lot of money in this business. In this business, leather crafting, you can make a lot of money and you don't have to settle for doing flea market work. You can actually build you a clientele base up and have you some money that's ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, hey, see you guys on the other side. This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here uh, in the Dirty Dirty. Peace out.